Good morning, everyone. My name is Caitlin, and I'm on staff here at CLC, and I just want to say welcome to Christian Lehman Church, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Um, we are so blessed uh, that you decided to tune in and join us this morning. Um, I know, you know, it's been a crazy few weeks, um, but for me personally, this is where I find my rest, where I find my peace is when I'm worshiping the Lord, um, when I come before him with all of those burdens and all of that pain, and, and I look up to him um, who is sovereign, who is in control, and who brings um, the hope. This morning, I, I was reflecting on, oh, <laughs> reflecting on the year. I know, you know, the beginning of the year always makes people reflect and uh, think, you know, we like to think of um, the beginning of the year as a restart. We have new things to look forward to. And after last year, <laughs> there are many new things to look forward to. But I don't know about you, it's, it's sometimes this feeling of, you know, wanting things to be different this year. And it's already three weeks in and look at all that has happened. Look at our country. Look at our relationships. Look at our, um, not at the pandemic, but still affecting people. Look at all these things that seem to be the same, and yet we're in a new year. Um, and I know that that can be discouraging. I know that that can uh, question, make you question, where are you, God? But this morning, again, I'm reminded, God is reminding me um, that he's the same God. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is the same God. Our circumstances might change or they might not change, and yet he is the same. And so in the midst of all of that struggle, challenge, pain, um, frustration, all the things that we want change from, um, we look up to the one. We look up to our Heavenly Father um, who is for us, who is with us, who says, do not be afraid. And we look up to him where our help comes from. I don't know where you're coming from this morning, um, but I invite you to surrender that to the Lord as we just, we just lift up um, songs of praise and songs of worship. We're going to sing through some psalms and sing through our prayers. And I, and I hope that this time would be for you and God, um, that you would lay all of that at his feet. Um, and receive the, the the promises that he has in his word. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through a psalm this morning, and um, I know people are probably still trickling on, and so go ahead and cre greet one another in the comment section, um, say hello, and uh, encourage one another, and um, we'll get started in just a second. Psalm 121, and read along if you have your Bibles. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will, will neither sleep nor sleep. Will neither slumber nor sleep. Sorry. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. And the Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning and this opportunity to to praise you and to worship you lord and we come before you humbly laying down all that we have at your feet and we ask you for help lord we ask you for strength we need you we need you and so lord help us to continue to keep our eyes focused upon you to look up to the mountains as we know where our true help and our true hope comes from lord and for anyone uh, who is feeling burdened or heavy this morning for whatever reason, Lord, I pray that they would experience the peace and the freedom that comes from hope in Jesus Christ, Lord.
Would you receive our worship this morning? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. my 
God, we are so desperate for more of you. Lord, we praise you for being the life, the life in our body, the breath in our lungs, the, the, the daily bread, Lord, the sustainer of everything. And we cry out to you this morning because we need more of you. We need your help. We need your help. Um, to get through the struggles of this world, the challenges that we face. We also need you um, to love better. We need you to help us to become more and more like Jesus. We need you to save us from our brokenness and our sin. We need you in every aspect of our lives, every part of it, Lord. And so we come before you this morning humble, humble, saying we can't do this on our own. We need you, Lord. 
we thank you for this time of worship this morning of just reflection and um, singing through the psalms singing through these prayers lord we know that there's power in singing and so help us lord to continue to do that not even just on sundays but every day may we continue to look up to you and to keep our eyes focused upon you we love you lord we ask that you would speak to us um, through this message through the worship through the announcements and we pray that you would be glorified and magnified and we love you in jesus name we pray amen all right at this time i'd like to pass it on over to denny for community life take it away denny thank you so much caitlin for uh, walking us through a beautiful time of worship. Good morning, CLC. Um, this morning, I figured I'd be joined by Peppa Pig because who couldn't use a little Peppa in their steppa? That being said, here at CLC, the mission statement is to make disciples who love God, love people, and you guessed it, who seek to serve the world. Um, one way that we seek to do that is we'd love to get to know you. So if this is your first time hearing terrible puns from me, um, or whether you've been bearing with them all these weeks and months, uh, we'd love to get to know you. And one way that we can do that is through uh, connecting with you. Um, simply reach us at www.christianlayman.org forward slash contact or email us at info at um, You know, each week, I always say this, I always emphasize it, and um, it's very dear and true to me, but we just have so many loving and amazing families here at CLC that would um, in a heartbeat, uh, just really take you in and really want to get to know you. Um, and so definitely make sure to reach out and uh, get plugged in here at CLC. Uh, for more information about that, also be sure to subscribe. I always point to the wrong, wrong direction, but um, in on the side panel, uh, there's a quick link for you to uh, get subscribed to our e-news. So definitely make sure to do that. Make sure you don't miss anything here at CLC. Um, so today is a communion day, and so uh, Pastor Ben will be walking us through that um, later in the service today. Um, so definitely make sure to get that bread, because all together now, why not? Um, so definitely make sure to check that out, and uh, we'll be doing that shortly with Pastor Ben. Um, so next Sunday at 1230, we will be having a college uh, virtual holy chow. We are a church that loves its food, and uh, might I say again, we definitely love our food, and we also love our college students. Um, definitely make sure um, to reach out, out to Caitlin or anyone on the CLC College Ministry team for more information. Uh, we will be providing you guys with a DoorDash code or a way to reimburse your lunch, and we just love to get to talk to you, um, and what a better way um, just really kick off the semester with some food and, and good conversation. Uh, but do not fear everyone else, the scallion pancake is here. So um, if not part of this 1230 um, CLC College Virtual Holy Chow, you can join us for a special cooking lesson with Rachel Lee's mom, Mrs. Lee, for some sesame and uh, scallion pancakes. Um, as I say every week, I love showing these pictures that you can only get if you join us next week. So uh, make sure to check that out and we'd love to see you there. So that being said, I'm going to get ready to sign off now, but hope everyone's having a wonderful week. <clears throat> and I know that uh, with a beautiful sunshine, don't uh, make sure not to forget to uh, get out there, get some fresh air, get some sunshine and uh, have a wonderful week, everyone. Now I'm gonna kick it on over to um, our very own Korean drama enthusiast, the man himself, Pastor Calvin, for this morning's message. Take it away. Good morning, CLC family and friends. I hope you're all hanging in there in the times that we are finding ourselves in. One of the things I enjoy when I have some free time is to watch K-dramas. For sure, for me, I confess this can be mindless entertainment. But during this pandemic and being stuck at home, watching these shows lets me do something together with my wife that's fun. And, and these dramas do spark interesting conversations between us. 
We like them because the stories give an Asian cultural perspective and often deal with issues that are actually relevant and challenging across all cultures. Recently, um, there was a popular show that had a storyline that dealt with the sensitive subject of mental health and serious emotional wounds from culture and families of origin. One main character had antisocial personality disorder and another struggled with self-esteem issues and the responsibility of living with an autistic older brother. That K-drama was called, It's Okay to Not Be Okay. Now that, that for me is a great title, which leads me to ask this question. Is it really okay to not be okay? Seriously, think about that. Can we be real with each other to say we are not fine, that we're not okay? Do we allow those kinds of safe space? For example, when we often greet one another, we often ask, hey, how are you doing? Usually you get the perfunctory answer back, I'm okay, I'm fine. But are you really being honest that you are truly okay? In a shame-based culture that many of us come from, sharing honestly about our pain, our troubles, our brokenness is so hard to do. We all know growing up how imperfections are always brought up in comparison to other people. I mean, parents often compare their children who hasn't heard, you know, so-and-so is a straight A student, or I heard your friend James is getting a big promotion at that big company that any admittance of failure or weakness can be weaponized against you. How hard is it to tell others of a recent layoff or that your marriage is in trouble? I commonly hear this from people and pastors themselves are not exempt. We just hide and avoid, afraid of what people may think or say. And we just answer by saying, I'm okay, when we are really not okay. And for sure, this is the same for mental and emotional health issues, which are such taboo subjects in our community. Mental illness and emotional breakdowns are so embarrassing to talk about, let alone seek treatment. I know because I've been there. I have stories in my own family where depression, for example, and mental illness labels you as a black sheep, apparently bringing shame to a family name. And sadly, those of us in the church, which you would think should be a place for healing, we are no better in dealing with it. Don't you wish church could be a community you can say, I'm not okay? I know I do, because I still have plenty of emotional baggage to deal with in my own life. But I know the love of Christ that can overcome. In our current dream series to start off this new year, we have been sharing our hopes and dreams for CLC. This morning, I wanna say, I dream of a church that strives for emotionally healthy spirituality where safe space creates brave space. I repeat, I dream of a church that strives for emotionally healthy spirituality where safe space creates brave space. Let me break this down for us. Years ago at a past church retreat of ours, our speaker opened his message with this qu quote from Peter Scarzero, the author of the book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Quote, you can't be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature, end of quote. That statement rocked my world. The spiritual discipleship approaches of many churches and ministries often lack the language, theology, or training to help people in this area of emotional health. We all know that God created us in his image, which is composed of five dimensions, physical, spiritual, intellectual, or mental, social, and emotional. Peter Scarzero says, ignoring any aspect of who we are as men and women made in God's image always results in destructive consequences in our relationship with God, with others, and with ourselves. Physical and mental disabilities are usually readily apparent. However, emotional underdevelopment is not so obvious when we first meet people. We only get to see the tip of the iceberg. Only over time and with more interaction will that become apparent. 
Unfortunately, by then, depending on circumstances, destructive consequences have already occurred. Misunderstandings and hurt happens because of emotional unhealthiness that is buried deep within us. How do I make the case for mental and emotional health from the Bible? Well, usually that means going back to Jesus. From the life of Jesus, who is our role model, we really don't have much in scripture about how Jesus grew up. But for sure, we would have no argument that Jesus was and is mentally, emotionally healthy. I want us to look at this verse from Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke wrote, And Jesus advanced in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and men. This verse points to growth in three areas for Jesus, who was both man and God. First, he grew in stature. And stature has two meanings here. First, there's a physical growth. And second, there is growth in reputation. Jesus, being human, grew as a boy into a man. He got taller and stronger physically. And the other meaning for stature is reputation, which means character development. So Jesus, according to this verse, grew stronger in character of being above reproach. Next, Jesus, this, this scripture tells us, grew in wisdom. For me, this means the development of the mind for mental growth. Other words used for wisdom are intelligence, understanding, insight, discernment, acumen, savvy, smarts. Growing in wisdom meant Jesus became mentally stronger and more mature in thinking. And lastly, in verse 52, Jesus grew in favor with God and men, which I take as being relationally whole, both vertically and horizontally in his relationships. This implies social and emotional health. We often call this soft skills or EQ. The word favor means approval or goodwill. And this favor is a result of being in right relationship with God and people. To have good relations with others requires emotional healthiness. Because when conflict happens, the ability to reconcile requires a level of emotional healthiness to have those difficult conversations. If there are underlying feelings of fear, anger, bitterness, shame, past betrayal, insecurity, to name a few emotional barriers, if those feelings or emotions have not been dealt with, Resolution in broken relationships will be hard, if not impossible. And broken relationships does not give you favor. Therefore, in summary, Luke 2, verse 52, tells us that Jesus grew healthy not only physically, spiritually, and socially, but he also grew mentally and emotionally. If Jesus did that, he instructs us to do the same. How might this look for us? I want us to turn to another scripture that may give us more insight into what it means to be mentally and emotionally healthy. Well, in Matthew 10, verse 16, Jesus seems to tell his disciples of the importance to be mentally strong and emotionally tenderhearted when being sent out into the dangerous world for ministry. Verse 16 says, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. There are different translations for these two words, wise and innocent, in different Bible versions. And looking at those translations helps to better understand their meaning. The word wise is in another Bible translation as shrewd. Earlier, I already talked about how Jesus grew in wisdom in verse 52 of Luke chapter 2, which I take to mean mentally strong or tough which can be the case with shrewdness. And here he tells his disciples and us to be wise too. Plus in verse 16, Jesus also tells us to be innocent, which in another translation uses the word gentle. Jesus himself is described as being gentle, which does not mean weak, but rather power or strength under control. For me to be able to be gentle requires a tremendous amount of emotionally healthiness. Otherwise, for example, my anger, if I am emotionally unhealthy, will cause me to bite your head off when I get really upset and lose control. 
there's an obvious tension between these two attributes. To be wise and also innocent, to be a serpent and a dove. It's not unusual for Jesus to often ask his followers to be two seemingly conflicting attitudes at the same time. But that is what he commands us to do. In Matthew 10, verse 16, I can say Jesus is telling us to be wise or tough-minded and innocent or tender-hearted. Here's a quote I found that talks about being tough-minded versus soft-minded. Quote, very few people achieve this toughness of mind, but all too many are content with a soft mind. It is a rarity to find one willing to engage in hard, serious thinking. Man's soft-mindedness is expressed in his unbelievable gullibility. The soft-minded person believes anything. Very few people have the toughness of mind that drives them to look beyond the inevitable biases and subjective appraisals of the newspaper headlines to the actual truth of the situation. End of quote. Who do you think said this? Answer, MLK Jr. Tomorrow happens to be the holiday when we honor civil rights activist and pastor Martin Luther King Jr. I came across his sermon based on Matthew 10 verse 16 called A Tough Mind and a Tender Heart. Although written circa 1959, what he said back then is so prophetic for today. Dr. King said that Christians must be tough-minded to be wise and to be able to test everything to be true because soft-mindedness makes a person gullible or vulnerable into believing false truths, lies, and conspiracies. Do you see the relevance for today? Romans 12, verse 2, the Apostle Paul supported this concept of being tough-minded. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. On the other hand, Matthew 10, 16 also tells us that we are to be innocent as doves, which Dr. King said is necessary to counterbalance a tough mind with a tender heart, because tough-minded is cold by itself, where tender-hearted gives warm compassion. Both are necessary. Both are intention. Both are evidence of emotionally healthy spirituality, and both are important for safe space become brave space where dialogue and hard conversations can be had. Safe space and brave space is the second part of my dream for our church, which is to dream of a church that strives for emotionally healthy spirituality, where safe space creates brave space. First, our church must establish safe space before one can move to brave space to challenge one another to grow and heal. But one or the, it's not one or the other, both must happen to have healthy communication that can lead to new understandings and reconciliation. We want to be a church that welcomes all to come as you are so that people can meet Jesus and then be transformed to experience the wholeness and vitality of life in Jesus Christ. A safe space is ideally one that doesn't incite judgment where the ultimate goal is to provide support. A safe space is allowing permission to say, it's okay to not be okay. This is where compassion must be demonstrated, to be tender-hearted, and emotional healthiness must be in play. Yet safe space must also not prevent a certain level of discomfort and vulnerability that is necessary for change and healing in that support. Safe space must lead to what is known as brave space. Brave space, brave space encourages dialogue and hard, meaningful conversations that lead to understanding and hopefully agreement and even healing. Brave space is being able to speak up where holding each person accountable takes place to do the work of sharing experiences and coming to new understandings, a feat that's often hard and typically uncomfortable. This generally requires being mentally strong or what Dr. King called a tough mind. My sincere hope and dream is that CLC will be a church that strives for emotionally healthy spirituality, where safe space creates brave space. Is there evidence from our church that we can have hope to fulfill this dream? I think so. 
And here's two recent examples that I want to share. Two of our staff core values we, that we have been working on at least the last year or two so that we can be an emotionally healthy team are one, we would practice healthy communication and work towards reconciliation when misunderstanding and hurt feelings happen. And two, to be transparent with one another, to be honest and vulnerable in our interactions. If you ask any of our staff members, and I'm sure they will agree that we have become better in our communications, even though sometimes it has been very uncomfortable when tensions rise in the room. We have seen in the past where there has been emotional unhealthiness on the staff, how that hurts us from working well together. And I see our commitment to this value has had positive carryover benefit in our relationships outside of staff. There are stories where staff members can work out conflict with their siblings, where in the past they would just run away and avoid it. Another example was just last week, where at the recent leadership meeting, we were hearing updates about the current pastoral search. I was encouraged to see people sharing directly, face-to-face, -face, their questions and thoughts with honesty and transparency to one another in public, showing that our church is making inroads of feeling safe to have brave space to dialogue and not remain silent or talk indirectly in those so-called back rooms. That's progress because honestly speaking, we have not been emotionally healthy spiritually in many ways in recent years. And my hope and desire is for our church to continue to grow in this area. At this time, I wanna bring in someone to help me out with this dream of emotionally healthy spirituality. Mm -hmm. So let's welcome Linda Liu now. Good morning, Linda. Hi, Pastor Calvin. Hi, CLC. I would like to uh, begin um, my uh, interview with you, Linda, with this first question. How does your own life story intersect with this dream of emotionally healthy spirituality? Thanks for asking me this question. And it, it forced me to look back on a lot of the brokenness in my life. So I just pick one big fat broken thing to share. And that's uh, how work has been my idol throughout my life. And it's a safe thing. Sorry, I'm not gonna go super brave today, but it's, it's, um, it shows up in my life in a lot of different ways. And it started out as a good thing. And so, um, you know, if you're a good student, you, you, you get A's, you feel good, your teachers love you, everything is awesome. And, and then it, it progressed. It looked like uh, as an investment banker, um, no sleep, party hard, but you get a lot of reward financially and you feel like you're a pretty big deal. And, um, you know, throughout that, the story, it looked, looked like that. But in my mind, I didn't realize that I was super unhealthy, but my body took a, my body took a hit. My health took a huge hit. And so I, I share the story. It's super messy. I'm not out of the woods yet. I'm scared to death of being offered a really awesome opportunity to work on a, I got recruited recently and I was like, I can't even answer that email because I don't even know, you know, what do I think? What do I feel? I'm scared to death of dying because I almost did die mm -hmm. um, several times. Like my hair fell out as a banker and I kept going and um, it grew back. Uh, you know, fast forward as, a, as I was working my, my butt off in tech my um, stomach had a problem and I had emergency surgery. Recovered, got up. I even took an interview from the, uh, from the hospital. I didn't, I didn't get a job, but I, I, I thought I, I was uh, still killing it. And then uh, more recently, I got hit with cancer, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And I, um, luckily, I, I, I'm, I'm clear, I'm in remission, but I had three surgeries. So, so like, I think I'm okay, but I'm really not okay. And my body was telling me stuff. And it was the third surgery where I finally decided to like pay attention because, you know, God says when he repeats things many, many times, it's really important. So this was the third health challenge and three surgeries in one. So I'm still stuck. It's not safe. I worship work. It's an addiction. I want to feel good when I get rewarded and, 
get admiration, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how my personal story, the safe example of work being an idol and an addiction uh, is has how, how I landed on knowing that I, I needed to get better. Um, and I'll stop there. Does that make sense? Uh, well, thank you for sharing that. It <clears throat> definitely was uh, uh, definitely a lot of courage to do that. So I appreciate that. So my second question is, um, you have been discussing with the pastors about moving our church towards more emotionally healthy spirituality. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts, plans for yourself and maybe others to heal and get wholeness in Jesus Christ? Well, um, just thinking about this, it was interesting with the, the dialogues I've had with uh, people at CLC, Cecil Wong and the, uh, the folks during listening and healing. It turns out when the student is ready, it's so cheesy. But when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. He, he's, he's been here, but I didn't realize what a resource he might be for me because I'm, I'm not a child. I don't have children and I don't have a family of my own. So like children's ministry, family development was like not in my scope, but it turns out that um, being healthy and whole and emotionally um, getting to a better place is where I need to be for myself and why I, I want to get better so I can crush it and work on crazy awesome projects and just live life to the fullest, but I'm scared to death. So I want to fix myself and I want to do it in a way that is honest and that also respects and, and um, is within my faith. It is Christ-led. It's not just, oh, go to a therapist or um, there's a lot of resources out there. And, and, but my, my hope is that it's tied with frameworks that exist, that have been proven, psychology, teaching, and also from my faith, preaching um, Christ. So that's the, the, the balance I'm looking for. So I'm signing up for this. I'm, I'm inviting folks to reach out. Um, we have a small little cohort that I'm sort of cobbling together, together with Cecil. And so we're going to explore some some topics. And if you're interested, hit, out, hit me up. And this is what it looks like. <clears throat> it looks like um, uh, who you are, like who I am. I'll start with me. Who I am. I don't know who I am. But when I'm a good student, I know who I am. I'm a good student. Or if I'm crushing it and I'm a VP at a big swing in investment bank, that's who I am. So if my identity is tied to these kind of things and suddenly I don't have a job, I am not in a good place. So that's one version of what being stuck or not healthy boundaries ugh, looks like. It looks like I wanna help people. And so when people ask me for help, I say, yes, 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 yes. And then I give all my time away and suddenly I have no time for myself and I flip out. That's what that looks like. Another example is, um, let's say my, uh, oh, parents, let's say the, the parents had a really bad relationship, divorced or whatever. And so it looks like at my level, it might be, again, these are examples. These are friends of mine, right? So it looks like, oh, I'm not sure I want to get married right now because I don't want to sign up for a life of hell. Um, it might look like not getting along with my mom. It might look like uh, someone gets really angry but the anger actually on top is, is like covering sadness or fear or anxiety and hurt and stuff like that. And so these are all examples. You know, I've, I've heard these are other things people say, like um, my resume or my life isn't what I envisioned it would be. I feel lost. I don't feel good about myself anymore. feels like I'm nothing. I'm a failure. Or it's frustrating to see someone I love make bad choices for themselves. I can't be happy unless they're happy and well. Uh, it looks like I, feeling, I feel disconnected. I'm in a home group and several ministries, but it really would be nice to have a space to get real, go deep and be intentional. So these are all like different examples. There's words around these like, oh, family of origin and oh, boundaries or uh, cultural codependent. There's a lot of words like this, but I'm hoping the way I share it is like in English, <laughs> in like real life, get real and pray, get real and pray. Otherwise, it just sounds like, you know, it's just too, um, not for me. So I'm hoping that like, if any of this sounds like it makes sense, hit me up <laughs> and we can figure out if there's a cohort or a study later on. I have big dreams, but we're just gonna start small. Well, thank you, Linda, for sharing. And uh, I definitely am looking forward to what will bear fruit with your plans of a, a possible new ministry in our church to grow emotionally healthy spirituality. So thank you, Linda. 
My dream for our church is that we become a church that strives for emotionally healthy spirituality, where safe space creates brave space, a safe place where it is okay to not be okay. So there can be brave space to allow the work of healing the wounds. Definitely, we got a long ways to go. We'll take courage and hard work by many of us. It will be messy. And of course, we cannot do this by ourselves without God's help through the Holy Spirit. But for us to be a healthier church, this intentional work is necessary. And imagine the world seeing a church where emotionally healthy spirituality is being worked out and evident. What an amazing testimony that would be of the wholeness and vitality of life in Jesus Christ. I want to close with this story that I found to be a light of hope in a dark moment in our country's history. You all know that on January 6th, the nation's capital was attacked by an angry mob. On that Wednesday morning, senators and congressional representatives were gathered in the House chamber for the certification of this past presidential election. One congressman named Jamie Raskin was grieving, but he was there still to do his sworn duty. As Mr. Raskin rose to address the chamber, he was greeted by a bipartisan standing ovation. You see, Mr. Raskin, just the day before, had buried his 25-year-old son, Tommy, who on New Year's Eve committed suicide. His son ended his lifelong battle with depression. The congressman from Maryland peered around the room, patting his heart in gratitude for just a moment, a room that had been politically divided and polarized more times than not was in unity, saying to Mr. Raskin, knowing the tremendous pain he was feeling, it's okay to not be okay. If Congress can do that, why can't the church? And that is my hope and my dream. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy in our lives. If it were not for you, we would not even be aware of you or our need for your transforming work deep in, beneath the surface of our lives. Lord, give us the courage to be honest and to allow the Holy Spirit's power to invade all who we are below the surface so that Jesus might be formed in us. Lord, help us to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is for us personally. Help us to advance in wisdom and stature and in favor with you and men. Help us to be able to fulfill our dream of being a church that strives for emotionally healthy spirituality where safe space creates brave space. And I pray this in the most precious name of Jesus, amen. Oh, wow. Uh, that was a very powerful and an inspirational message. And thank you, Alinda, for being so transparent in addressing our church to be emotionally uh, healthy, uh, spiritual beings. Um, I just really pray that our, our church would create a, a safe place uh, so that we could um, face and uh, meet uh, brave spaces. Well, well, good morning, CLC. Uh, my name is Ben, and I'm one of the pastors here at, at the church. And as this morning, uh, as we take communion, um, I want to share uh, what's been on my mind. Um, you know, as I was praying and fasting this week, um, what's been on my mind uh, was love and obedience. And, um, you know, obedience is so important because, you see, what we bring offering to whatever we obey and whatever we obey eventually becomes our master. And so in Jesus Christ, uh, we find that perfect model of obedience as he obeyed the Father, even unto death, even death on a cross. And so on the night in which our master was to be betrayed, uh, he took the bread and he gave and he thanks, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. And, and in the same way, he took the cup. He took the cup after the supper and said, this is the cup of my new covenant in my blood. And do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in light of what's happening in our country, in your own lives, I just want you guys to remember that don't look, don't look what, what's happening. Look up, look up to God because he is our eternal hope and eternal salvation. So let's pray uh, before we take uh, our communion. So let's pray. Lord, um, uh, will you stir in our hearts today and to, to quiet our hearts as we approach this communion table. And we ask you that, that what draw each one of us to ever closer to the fellowship with yourself and to each one of us as we partake together of this bread and the cup in grateful remembrance of what you did for each one of us on Calvary's cross. And in return, we strive to obey and to emulate Christ in likeness in a world that we live in. Just as we take this communion, we also want to remember that you are the Lord of our lives. And that, Lord, as we just have heard your message, I just pray, Father, Lord, that, that we will be tough as a servant and that we will be innocent like a dove in a world. And I just pray, Father, Lord, that continually that you would watch our church so that we may strive to be emotionally healthy spiritual beings. Father God, I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's take our communion. Back to you, Caitlin. Thank you, Pastor Ben. Um, church, we're going to continue to respond with one last song of worship. So I invite you to continue to reflect on the words that Pastor Calvin and Linda left us with and um, go ahead and partake in communion with your families.
Church, may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who loves you and has freed you from your sins by his blood and made a kingdom of priests to God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for joining us once again this Sunday. Um, I know there was a, a lot that was talked about and probably a lot more conversations to be had from here. Um, if you're interested in what Linda talked about or even what, you know, Pastor Calvin was sharing his message, um, reach out to reach out to us. Uh, there are opportunities. There's ways for us to grow as a community, as in a church in this area. And so um, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, we're going to continue to fellowship and um, continue on with this day in our virtual uh, social hall that's happening right after service. So the Zoom link and ID should pop up any moment and the link in the uh, comment section for easier access. We'd love to see you there, catch up and um, talk a little bit more. And if you do have any uh, immediate prayer requests or things you'd like to speak with a member from the prayer team about, uh, they will also be available in the social hall. We'll break you out into a breakout room and give your time to pray and chat together. If you have tithes or offerings, uh, please make those online at christianlayman.org slash give. Um, and also, if you do have prayer requests that come on later on in the week, email those to prayer at christianlayman.org and someone from the prayer team or the staff team will contact you this week. Last announcement, uh, basic youth, we have our basic service happening at 12 o'clock. So check your emails for the Zoom link. Uh, we'd love to see you there and continue uh, this new year fellowshipping as one body. So youth, we'll see you there. Everyone else, I'll see you uh, either in the social hall or same time, same place next Sunday. Um, yeah. Have a blessed week.